I have a new cook system I want to share with you today. This is the Polaris pressure regulator cooking system from Fire Maple. If you're interested in hearing more about it, keep watching. Before we begin, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending this cook system to me so that I could share it with you. So as you can see, what I've done is I put everything back in the stuff sack that it comes with so that I can take it all apart, show you all the components of this system and assemble it at the same time. And then I'll give you some of the specifications for this system and we'll talk about its pros and cons as well as demonstrate it in use. So it is a windy day out here in the woods and I keep turning my back to the wind so that I don't create too much wind noise, but hopefully you'll be able to hear what I have to say. So what I've done is I've just taken the cook system out of the stuff sack, which I'll set aside. I'm gonna give you a few specifications for the cook system now, and then we'll slowly put it together so that I can show you the components as we go. So the entire package weight, including that stuff sack, comes in at one pound, seven ounces, or 652 grams. Now, mind you, that's minus the gas cartridge because, of course, that'll be variable to what size cartridge you have and how full it is. So it is without the gas cartridge that I give you that weight. The diameter at its widest is four and seven eighths inches, which is 124 millimeters. And its height top to bottom is seven and one eighth inches, which is 181 millimeters. So the first thing I wanna show you is just, there's a little security lock on the handle right here. And it's just a little ball on the end of a little wire that hooks into a notch on the handle. I think I've got it close enough that you can see that. And you just flick it open like that. And that allows you to bring the handle open and it will lock into place quite nicely. Now the lid is made of a very heat resistant Lexan or plastic type material, BPA free. They refer to it as Triton. I've heard that in other products like Nalgene uses the same thing. It has a nice little silicone uh, gripper on top, which is actually quite nice when the water is boiling so that you don't burn your fingers. First thing you'll see inside as we open this up is the canister stand and I'll open that up and show you how that works. This is very standard. A lot of systems have this. You can buy these separately. I have I think one or two of these uh, at home for other canister systems as well. It works well and it's lightweight. Now inside let me turn this upside down and grab the first two items. So the first item I'm going to show you, and I'll just put aside quickly, is my um, eight ounce can of isobutane fuel. It's just a, a store shelf brand from Canadian Tire. They is the Woods brand, so that's not necessarily important for the uh, demonstration. This is a ring, and I'll show you how it's used, an accessory ring that you can use with the burner system. So if you don't want to use the included pot with the burner and you want to use another pot or a fry pan or anything else you want to heat up, you can put this on top of the burner system to give it the height clearance and the ventilation that it needs in order to work. And I'll show you that we're in operation in a moment. And finally, in the stove is the burner itself. Now, I'm going to give you some close-ups of the pot as well as the burner. Let's start with the burner because I have a few comments I want to say about this. So here is what makes this system special. And I think it really makes it stand out from a lot of the other systems, even the higher end systems that you can purchase. This is a pressure regulated gas stove and a pressure regu regulated gas stove is special for a couple of reasons. One, they're much more fuel efficient over the length of the cartridge, usually giving you a better uh, burn, not so much a burn time, and that's uh, totally uh, dependent on the uh, strength or the power of the, of the stove burner itself, but it will give you a nice even heat from beginning to end with the canister. So it doesn't matter how full it is uh, or how close to empty it is, you'll consistently get the same pressure in the stove because that's exactly what it does. It regulates the pressure of the gas coming into the stove. The other thing it does and does especially well is it allows the stove to work in cold temperatures. Now, that's down to a limit, but the uh, company Fire Maple says that this burner will operate at 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus six degrees Celsius, which is below just about every other gas stove I have, at least ones that don't have a generator on it so that you can run it in liquid mode. So um, that's pretty good. That means 
except for the colder months of the winter, I can use this without any fear of it not operating for me. So you can see that everything is built into this hard heat resistant plastic casing. Uh, one of the things I like about that is that you can pick up and hold on to this even while the thing is operating, not that you would necessarily want to, but it does allow you to hold on to it if you're placing or trying to put the pot on and lock it into position as I'll demonstrate in a moment. A little fold over lever, that's your gas uh, turn knob there, and a built-in piezoelectric uh, igniter, and there, there is the igniter on top. And you can see it is that concave design that most of the pressure, re pressure regulated stoves have. So what about the power for this thing? Well, it's an 1800 watt or 6142 BTUs per hour rated. Uh, what does that mean? It means it it's fast. <laughs> it gives you a quick boil time. So, and I know most of you are going to say, as I do as well, boil times are only relative if they are followed by good fuel efficiency. That's more important, especially with a gas canister stove. Uh, you know, it, it, to me, I'm used to using an alcohol stove, so boil times are much, much slower, and I don't mind that. I'm never in that much of a rush. But what you want to know when you have a gas canister stove like this is not so much how fast it will bring your water to a boil, but how much fuel it will conserve or use in the process of doing that. And we'll talk more about the performance that I got out of this in a few moments, moments time. So let me show you the pot with a little bit of detail. Hard anodized aluminum, neoprene sleeve around the outside, heat exchanger on the bottom, and I think unique pretty much to Fire Maple is this fold out handle, which locks into place in this position. And with a little push button right here, you unlock it and fold it up over the top of the pot, of course, with the lid on, and it will hold everything in place for storage purposes. And I say rather unique because I've looked at some of the other brand name models that are comparative in size, and they don't have this. They have a nylon strap that you can run your hand through or grab like this. Uh, I get the reason why. It's to reduce weight and bulk, and that's fine. I understand that, but boy, oh boy, this is so handy to use when you're taking the stove on and off of the burner, and when you're pouring its contents into a bowl or a mug or whatever you're doing with it, it may add a little weight, but boy, it is much easier to use the stove system. So, all right, we'll talk more about this in a moment. I guess the one other thing I should say, though, is its capacity. So it's rated as a one liter pot, but I'll tell you, there is markings inside in metric and in imperial to give you an idea of where you are in terms of volumes. But when I looked at it, it has the one liter mark is down, oh, two inches from the top. So I, I thought I'd just take a, a, a chance, measure it out to see exactly how much you can get in this. Now, this is right up to the very brim, but you can get one and a half liters in here. So at 1500 milliliters, that's a lot of fluids inside of this pot. Now, realistically, you would never uh, hold it or fill it up to the very top because of course it's going to boil over you on you as you heat it up. But it's good to know that you can easily and safely put in a full one liter of water in this without risks of it boiling over. Here's the other thing that occurs to me that you can do with that extra capacity. If you want to use this for melting snow, provided it's not too cold, it's below that minus six Celsius or, my, or 20 degree Fahrenheit level. If you're looking to melt snow, I think that, and this stove, this setup is probably a good choice for doing so, um, you can get more snow on top of this because of course that snow is going to reduce long before it comes to a boil. So you can add a, quite a bit of snow into this unit. Uh, the only thing I will say about it is it's a little larger than most of the pots on the market in that they run a 650, 750 milliliters. I, I saw from looking at their specifications. What I don't know is whether that is the functional capacity or to the rim capacity. I know they're a little smaller, a lot of them, but uh, you know, this is rated as a two to three, well, you can, one person can use it. I'm gonna be using it, but up to three people 
available is the rated capacity for these, and most of the others are one or two person capacity. So this may be a little larger than a lot of the stoves on the markets, but I did find some of a comparable size that I'll give you some specs on in comparison, especially price. I think that's one of the important aspects. Okay, now that I've shown you the pot, let's put the system together. So the first thing I wanna do is open up the stand the, to give it the stability. Put the gas canister in. Do I have it in right? Yeah. So you can see that locks on. You've got nice wide capacity there. It screws on. Make sure the little uh, turn knob or turn handle is folded out before you start. Connect it as you would any other gas stove. A little shot of gas. All right. We're connected reasonably tight. Okay. So there's the system primarily ready to go. And now I would just put the pot on and you'll see that there is a little cutout notch like a keyhole notch. There are three of them. I've also got pine needles on this. Pine needles everywhere, of course. Pull that off before I start. There we go. That's better. Uh, there are detents on the sides of the burner that would lock these in. So you just set it down and it's a little short turn. And now it's completely locked in and ready to go. Now, the first thing I had to learn with this is to unlock it because everything expands a tiny bit with the heat is to be able to grab onto this plastic uh, component of the stove. So I was quite happy to see that you can do so and it's not hot, it's actually cool to the touch. So when you grab onto that, you give it just a little turn and you can take the pot off. So there it is ready to operate. Now, while I've got the pot off, this is the ring I told you about, the accessory ring. And what this allows you to do is set it in top of the stove burner. You now have some elevation so that you can put a fry pan on or a larger pot or whatever else that will span that there. And you've got some area for gas ventilation to come out or the hot gases to come out. You don't have the heat exchanger benefit that this pot provides you. But if you're looking to use a fry pan or something else with this, it'll work just fine. I think it works very well. The other thing you should note about a system like this is when this is locked in, not only are you going to get all the heat captured and picked up by the pot through that heat exchanger, that radiator fins heat exchanger type system, but it's also highly wind resistant. Most of the wind, now yes, there is subject to some air moving through if you're in a highly windy spot here, but for the most part, this will resist the effect of winds. Not to say you shouldn't block it off and give it a windscreen or put it behind something just to block the wind a little bit, it'll just give you that much more efficiency. But if you are caught out in the open and no way of blocking the wind, this still is very wind resistant. So that's another great component of it. Okay, what I thought I would do at this point is set it up and make some lunch with it and then we'll go over some of what I think are the pros and cons as well as I'll give you some comparisons with some other stoves on the market that are pretty close in design. All right, very quick demonstration of the Polaris system for you. And all I'm doing is just a simple lunch for myself today. Nothing fancy, no, no fancy meals or anything. Hard boiled eggs, that's what it will be, hard boiled eggs a piece of Polish sausage, and a chunk of cheddar cheese. Just a nice, simple lunch. And well within the wheelhouse of what I can do with this, of course, and we'll do it very quickly. But then I'll also make myself a cup of coffee with it, of course. So to get this going, you have the piezo lighter under this thumb. I have the uh, turn knob here, and I'll open the gas flow up. There we go. Put the eggs in very quickly. Great, put the lid on. And now it's just a matter of waiting until the water comes to a boil. Give it a minute of boiling. I'll probably turn the, the pressure down so it doesn't boil too, too hard. And then I'll let it sit just for a short period of time. I'll cool the eggs off and my lunch will be ready. And I think at that point we'll come back for some further discussion. So I, I jumped ahead and had my lunch off camera just so I could enjoy it without having to talk while I was eating. But I will make myself a cup of coffee now and then we'll sit back and talk a little bit more about the Polaris from Fire Maple. So uh, what have I got here? Okay, so I'm using my AeroPress, good cup of coffee. And to make a good cup of coffee, you need good coffee. And of course, I'm using Rampage Coffee. No surprise to anyone who watches my channel. 
I will put the link in the video description. It is mostly for Canadians. They are out of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So I don't think they ship anywhere else in the world, but you know, you could always ask them. Three good scoops of coffee will do this. I don't think I have a spoon, but I do see a stick. So here's what I wanted to show you. You can grab on to the bottom of the stove right down here. Give that that quarter turn and then you're off the stove so you don't have to worry about burning your fingers. As you can see, the water is very hot. I am going to need a stick for stabilizing anyway. And maybe I won't even need a stir stick with this. Just put my filter on. Give it a couple of minutes. And then of course, if you've watched my videos before, to use an AeroPress, once it's uh, been steeped a little bit of time, I'll flip this upside down, put it over my cup and press it in. But I gotta get that ant out first. Okay, I'll come back in a couple minutes time when my coffee's ready and we'll have a few more words about the Polaris from Fire Maple. Uh, yeah, great cup of coffee. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the Polaris from Fire Maple. So what I want to do is just give you some of the performance specs that I got with the stove in my testing, and then we'll move on to some of the pros and cons. So I, I did do a lot of testing with this at home. I ran five boil tests, um, one right after the other, to see if I could, the boil was going to be consistent. And well, here's what I got. So running at home under controlled circumstances using cold tap water and two cups of water or 500 milliliters, I was able to get it within a few seconds of each other, a two minute and 15 second boil, hard rolling boil. Uh, that's pretty good. Now, I do have faster stoves, but that's not what's important. What's important is the fuel consumption that this gave me. So I measured the weight of the canister before and after each of the tests, and I got right around six grams. It was sometimes it was 6.1, sometimes it was 5.9, right around six grams fuel consumption for each of the tests. Uh, there may be more efficient stoves out there, but I don't know what they are, or who makes them, but because that is really an extremely efficient stove that can only consume six grams of fuel to get the water to a boil, which means with that uh, eight ounce canister that I have, 227 grams of fuel content, I can pick up a brand new one of those, take it with me for the weekend, probably a week, and not have to worry about running out of fuel as long as I don't do extended cooking on it. But if I'm just boiling water and maybe heating soup up and maybe some eggs on a fry pan, that would last me a good long time. Now, I was running the burner full out, uh, full on, because I don't know how I could turn it back and measure where halfway would be. So full on, that's the performance I got. I thought that was pretty, pretty good, in fact. Okay, so let's go over some of the pros and cons for this uh, unit. So number one, and this is true of all the canister type sets, setups like that, is that they're compact. Everything fits inside. Everything that you need, including the gas canister, fits inside into one compact unit. Uh, that's quite a benefit. You don't have to do a mix and match of, what, of the things that you have at home. You have it all together and it's very functional that way. Um, that's great. Now, here's the thing I think I like most about these. Now, this is true, again, of other ones, is that they're very wind resistant, some more so than others. This one happens to be quite wind resistant. I was using it out here and there is a fairly stiff breeze, as I mentioned earlier in the video. It didn't seem to affect the boil time at all. Not that I timed it, because again, I'm out in the woods. I don't really care how long it takes, but it seems to work very well in the wind. Now, uh, I guess it would work better if I brought a windscreen with me, but uh, then you're carrying extra weight again. Okay, so what else about it? Well, again, it's that pressure regulated stove. The fact that it is so fuel efficient, as I mentioned, but also that it can run in such cold temperatures down to minus six Celsius or 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That means most of the winter, except for the really the coldest months, I can use this stove without worry about it failing on me. I can't say that about any of my other gas stoves, except one that is one that they call a regulator. It has a, um, a generator on it where the fuel is, uh, you run a liquid fuel through it. That's just a little different, not the subject for this uh, video. So um, 
yeah, I think that's one of the best benefits going for it. Um, I like the variability. So I, some of the tests I did, of course, was to use it with the fry pan as well as some other pots. And to do that, I had to use that accessory ring that lifted it off of the, uh, the burner ring itself. And uh, what I liked was the variability in the output. So I could turn that down so low that the water was barely bubbling, just, you know, very, very light simmer. That's great, especially if you're reheating a meal in this pot as opposed to just boiling water. You don't want to burn it and have it stick to the pot. So uh, that's one of the things, again, because it's a pressure regulated stove. It does that so, so well. Oh, one of the other things I guess I didn't mention is, but again, this does work with the other ones as well. The hard anodized aluminum is especially tough and it, you know, it doesn't scratch easy, it doesn't damage easy. That neoprene cover not only allows it to heat up quicker in cold temperatures, but it keeps the contents warm longer. I noticed that, that uh, you know, a few minutes after I turned the water off, it was still almost, almost still rolling, even though I had turned the burner off because it is uh, kept warm inside of the container because of the neoprene. So uh, that's also a benefit. Are there any cons? Yeah, there are a couple and they're relative. They're not absolute. These are not reasons not to buy this. These are just something to be aware of. Uh, number one, it's a little heavy. And what I mean by a little heavy, it's a little heavier compared with other systems from name manufacturers of a similar size. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to give you some of those uh, other brand name ones, some, some information on them in a moment. So that is a relative con but it's only a couple of ounces. I don't actually, didn't weigh all them out, but it's only a, a few grams or a few ounces extra in weight. And I think that is evens out or is actually a, a not a consideration. You, I mean, this is not an ultralight stove, is it? This is not what you're going with on a, a through height when you're where every gram counts. So this is about convenience, versatility, and functionality. And this ha that's what this stove has complete. It has all of those. So I'm willing to carry that little bit of extra weight knowing how much money I saved, and I'll mention that in a minute. Speaking of money, that is also a relative con. Now you have to understand Fire Maple has quite a lineup of products. They're one of the premier uh, manufacturers of outdoor cooking products in, that, to come out of China. And this is the latest in their lineup of complete systems. Uh, and as a result, and having that, the pressure regulated stove to go with it, it's the most expensive of that lineup. So how is that a con? Well, it is, well, it's $85 can, uh, American, which is $110 to purchase this stove, plus any shipping and taxes or whatever you have in your area. That's considerably more than the other fire maple stoves. So you are paying more for this, but again, you get all those benefits of that pressure regulated stove. Having said that, it's still a relative con because when I tell you about the other brand name ones in a moment, I think you'll, you'll be quite surprised. Is there any other cons? Well, this is one of those picky little things that it's not even annoying. It's just something to be aware of. This is the lid and it has a steam vent hole right here, just a one small little hole. And I was thinking when after I had boiled my eggs that I wanted to pour the water off. And as I did, I was pouring the water out through that little vent and I was thinking it's so slow to do that. Wouldn't it be nice if Fire Maple had put four, five little tiny holes right across the rim so that you can use it as a strainer for things like pasta or rice or anything else you want to strain the water through. Um, it would just make that just that little bit more versatile without affecting the functionality of it as all. As it is, that worked. It just took a little longer to strain the water out through that little hole right there. Okay, let me grab my papers because I want to tell you about these other comparable products. When I say comparable, it took me some time to find products that were comparable inside because as I mentioned, there are a lot of these on the market most of them are smaller, intended for one or two people. This is intended for one to three people, so it's a little larger. They do have them from the other brand name manufacturers, and, I've, and this is what I found. Okay, let's start with the most, probably the most well-known ones or well-known brand, which is Jetboil. Uh, Jetboil seems to be synonymous with this type of a system. They have a stove system called the Sumo. That's their largest. It is also a pressure regulator regulated stove and it's very similar in size and weight but here in Canada it sells for $185 so that's $75 more 
than this stove. I don't own one. I can't give you a comparison side by side. I don't know what the specs are in terms of performance goes, but I don't know that I would spend an extra $75 just to get a brand name Jetboil. So that, that's just me, okay? Um, another one is the Primus Light XL. So this is their largest gas stove. Their stove is not pressure regulated, although it is about the same size in volume. And it costs $170 Canadian. So again, you're still paying $60 more for a system that does not even have a pressure regulated stove. Okay, last one. And this is this is touted as the best of the best, and that is the MSR wind burner system. Um, I, I understand it's a really good system. I have only looked at them in the sporting goods stores. I don't own one. I don't know anybody who owns one. I'd love to do a comparison. I understand they're very good. They are smaller though than this. They have a volume of 1,000 milliliters or one liter, but a functional capacity of 600 milliliters. So it's not a big pot. It's a, as I said, quite a small pot. And it's not pressure regulated. And it doesn't have that handle like I showed you on the side of this one. Price here in Canada, $220. I don't know, it's your money, but uh, for my money, I would sooner buy something like this. I cannot imagine that they are that much better. And I can't confirm this, but most of these products are produced in China anyway. Yes, they have their own quality control, but quality control of the products coming out of Fire Maple is just excellent. The fit, finish, and construction, I could find no fault with this whatsoever. So I can highly recommend this. This is my first product from Fire Maple, but I'll tell you, it's not going to be my last. I actually have already placed an order for a couple of other items from Fire Maple that should arrive in a few weeks' time, and then I'll have the opportunity to test those out and then eventually bring them to you. I'm impressed. Okay. It may not be something you were considering buying. It may not be something you want at all. But what I think I would do is just open up to you for your comments and your questions. Do you have this Fire Maple system, the Fire Maple Polaris? Do you have one of the other systems that I mentioned? If you do, tell me what you think of those systems. Are they worth the money? Uh, if you have any questions about this stove or any other stove that maybe I can get my hands on, then please put all of that in the comments section below. Of course, I'll be putting all the information in terms of specifications for this stove, as well as where you can purchase it in the video description. Okay, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.